In this short video I'll be demonstrating what an elbow fusion looks like on a radiograph. This schematic diagram here shows a very deep olecranon fossa and so the fat that sits within it is not visible on the lateral film because it's obscured by bone. Unlike the anterior fat pad which is seen here and although there's less fat anteriorly because this fossa is more shallow, the fat can actually be seen as this lucent line in front of the anterior cortex of the distal humerus. Note that the fat pad posteriorly is never seen in normal individuals on a radiograph. When you get a joint effusion, the capsule, which is demonstrated as this green line gets pushed anteriorly in the front and posteriorly at the back and the fat pad moves anteriorly and posteriorly respectively and as the fat pad moves away from the line of the cortex it then becomes visible on the radiograph. The anterior fat pad is already visible on the radiograph but what happens is it becomes a little more steep from its original shallow position and this is nicely demonstrated by the diagram here on the left. This is a patient who has elevation of the anterior fat pad and visibility of the posterior fat pad so the assumption is that there is an effusion which is causing this appearance. On the AP view you can see that there is a fracture of the radial head as a cause of the effusion. This schematic diagram explains why the fat pad looks the way it does. It's been stripped away from the anterior cortex by the joint capsule which has now moved anteriorly because of the joint effusion. The same is true of the posterior fat pad because the joint capsule has moved posteriorly on account of this elbow effusion. So just to recap, here is the anterior fat pad which should really be aligned very shallowly um, in the anterior portion and the fat pad posteriorly is now visible. Here is a very complex uh, injury where there's a fracture of the radial head, a portion of the radial head has gone back into the joint and prior to this reduction film there was also a dislocation of the elbow. You can clearly see that there is a posterior fat pad and the anterior fat pad is no longer shallow along the anterior cortex but it's now almost perpendicular to the anterior cortex because of the distension caused by the elbow effusion. This patient uh, underwent a CT scan and nicely demonstrates elevation of the fat pad anteriorly and also posteriorly by the elbow effusion, which can be seen here. Note also this patient's got a fracture of the coronoid process of the ulna. Two different examples. This is a patient who has elevation of the anterior fat pad and visibility of the posterior fat pad. It wasn't possible to see a fracture either on this view or on the AP view, but the assumption is made that once a patient who has a history of trauma has an elbow effusion, it's almost certainly caused by a radial head or radial neck fracture. In this particular patient, again, you can see the posterior fat pad. The anterior fat pad has now been stripped off the anterior cortex to lie in a more anterior position. And the fracture here is very subtle, but it's just a break in the cortex of the junction of the radial neck and the radial head. In summary, normal individuals are allowed to have a shallow anterior fat pad, which is close to the anterior cortex, but the posterior fat pad should never be seen. If it is seen, this is synonymous with a joint effusion, and if you have an elevated anterior fat pad, this is synonymous also with a joint effusion.
And the rule of thumb is that um, if you have a joint effusion without a visible fracture, the diagnosis is likely to be a radial head or radial neck fracture until proved otherwise.